Bishop James Nelson Brown began his ministry at the age of 23 at Greater St. Mary Baptist Church. While there, he began pastoring at Second Zion. And after pastoring at Greater St. Mary for 34 years, he decided to leave and begin another ministry at Fisher Community Church and the River of Life. Along with pastoring at three churches, he has also started a program by the name of Servant Heart Outreach, which helps formerly incarcerated males and females transition back into society. All right, my name is uh, Andrew Stewart. I'm uh, 58 of, uh, of age, and, and I was just released from the prison. And uh, I just got into the, uh, the program about three or four weeks ago. Uh, I was released from uh, uh, Raven Correctional Center. I did, uh, I did a total of 20 years in, uh, in the institution. And I was released now about, about a year. And uh, I came about Pastor Brown, you know, since my, since my release. And, uh, and uh, he, he really had been a big help to me. Well, it, it enabled me to stay out the street for once, you know, and uh, I always worked, all, all my life I worked, and uh, I got a call from Mr. Leo. I was uh, working in a refinery, and I got a call from Mr. Leo, told me to come on over here and uh, help him with this program. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big help for, uh, for inmates like myself, you know, and it's, it's, it, it, you're put back into the community. You're doing something uh, of value for the community. Like I said, Pastor Brown been a big access to this program. Well, we are renovating, you know, rooms and trying to find people, you know, like I said of myself, a place to stay, you know, a place to get their food stamps, Social Security, you know, cards, and Medicaid, and you know, it's going to be a big access for them. So you you can say because of this program is the reason why you're doing so well now after being incarcerated? Right, exactly right. Because uh, like I said, I've been, you know, I was, uh, I was released about a year ago. And when I come home, they didn't have this program. I only had Pastor Brown, you know. And uh, he, I've been kind of, he's been kind of lenient to me, found me a place to stay, you know. But now, since the program, People who come out now are going to be in better shape than I was. They'll have them a job for 40 hours, you know, put, some, put a little change in their pocket, you know, and not just only that, they have them somewhere to stay. They have people to bring them here to their, you know, and this, this building is going to allow them to get anything they need as far as their food stamps, their, uh, their uh, Social Security, you know, card, and, you know, Medi Medicaid and stuff like that. This program right here is going to enable them to do just that. Well, we're happy to see you doing well, Mr. Andrew, and please continue to keep up the good work. Never been better. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Okay. Volunteers from all over come to help Bishop Brown with renovating the Outreach Center. Student volunteers have the option of relaxing while on spring break, but these students travel all the way to New Orleans to help renovate the Servant Heart Outreach Center. The goal is to have as much as possible completed by the end of their spring break. Volunteers spend hours chipping, painting, sweeping, and mopping to help get the building up to par. Um, I'm Rebecca Aiton. Um, I'm from St. Mary's University um, in Winona, Minnesota. Um, the program is called Soul, Serving Others United in Love, and there's a bunch of groups from our campus who go to different places throughout the U.S. to volunteer and help with communities, and 
our group decided to come to New Orleans. Um, well, today we're working at this place and we're doing some scraping and then some painting. Um, we're changing some of the tiles and we are uh, kind of cleaning it out, kind of helping it make it new and so that it can you know, be, be born and to help others in the community. Um, I think we were just kind of like looking around to see like who needed the most help and like they're saying like oh we would love to have you help us and so we're like oh we'd love to help and we're just kind of like open to like whoever needs help whoever is like um, you know like willing to take our help then we're gonna go and help them. This has actually been my first year but there's been people who've been here for like four years and it's I don't know it's it kind of keeps going like it's um you can do it like over like a spring break or like a fall break kind of a thing so but yeah there's people who've been doing it a lot but this is my first time and I'm really liking it. You're enjoying it great and is it more of a semester thing or is it for school grade or how are you getting credit for this while you're in school? Um it's actually just whether you want to do it or not you don't it's like you don't have to it's just literally volunteering mm -hmm. and it's kind of like every time when we go home for break so it's like an option to either like go home or do this instead so and the fact that the people are deciding to do this rather than go home it's like they're giving up their like their spring break to come and help people and it's really like rewarding yeah. for for us and for the community that we're helping okay well we appreciate you helping coming down to New Orleans and helping us okay yeah thank you thank you Bishop Brown continues to serve in the community by hosting Bible study and feeding the elderly twice a week at the Fisher Senior Village. Along with Bible study once a week, he also serves full course meals to the elderly who resides in the community. Genesis chapter 47. Last time we met, Jacob and his son Joseph was reunited. Last time we met, Pharaoh and all of his Egyptian soldiers were excited because Joseph's family had come to be with him. What great joy that was to see Joseph. I wonder how he was before his family came. Remember, he's in a strange land. Although he has the second high position in the land, he don't have his family. Do you know God made all of us family over yes. Do you know you are in the family God want you to be in? Yes. And God expects you, expect you to be a beacon in your family, yes. a light in your family. That's what he wants all of us to be in our family. Yes. Especially once he saved us. When God saves you, He wants to use you. Yes. He wants you to be that instrument. Joseph was that instrument. Although over 25 years ago, he was sold by his own brother. God did that, Joseph. You meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. And if you pay attention, everything that happens to you, it happens for your good. It don't feel good all the time. But if you just get close to God, it'll work out for you. Amen. Today in chapter 47, as the story continues, then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brother and 
five men and presented them unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. Now let me stop and talk to you. That's interesting because we are expected to work. God has gifted every man the ability to make a livelihood. My name is James Nelson Brown, pastor of the Fisher Community Church here in Algiers. When did you know this was something you wanted to do for the rest of your life? I found out early, when I was 23 years of age, I found out that my calling was serving people. I didn't know the capacity, but I knew I was to serve people when I was 23. Describe your leadership style. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? My strengths is to be an example for people. My weakness is people take advantage of you when you are out there doing things for people. They take kindness for weakness. But I believe leading by example is the best way to lead. Yes. If the church closed its doors tomorrow, would the community miss its presence? And if so, how? Sure, uh, if the church fails today, we know that we're such a presence in the community. We're such a need in the community, looking for nothing. Only the church does that. So when that entity or institution is removed, then we know that people will not get their need, both spiritually and physically, met like they are being met today. By leading three churches in the city, as well as volunteering in the community, how do you remain motivated? Every time you see one person help, it gives you the motivation to want to help others. Both at Fisher, uh, Second Zion Baptist Church of Morero, and the River of Life Community Church in Harvey, we every day deal with impoverished people, people that others really don't want to uh, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and that's the calling that we have to deal with those the least the lost the last during Hurricane Katrina with everything going on in the city what made you stay behind and what exactly did you do well for me I have this phrase the captain stays on the ship so when Katrina came it wasn't the first time every time a hurricane would be threatening our area my wife and my daughter and grandchildren, they, are, they would leave and go to a hotel, a safe haven. I make sure that that happened. But I was always to stay on the ship, stay in the area because people, elderly people, handicapped people, I figured always would need some help. And I was chosen to be here for such a time as that. And what did you do while you were here? Well, Katrina was the greatest challenge I've ever had in my life. Uh, August 29th, 2005, uh, when Katrina came, first of all, three quarters of my roof came on. I had water coming in my house. But then when I walked around the block where I was pastoring and I looked at the devastation all around that block and then the next few blocks, it just changed my mind about the power of God and therefore I was used then to step up. We had the old A&P that we changed into St. Mary's Place Hall. And we had food that was there. We had gas that was there. Although we didn't have us, uh, any electricity, we had food and we had gas. And I started cooking the very next day. Uh, and 19 people were served the very next day. And the build-up just started continuing to come. We were, at one time, feeding over 1,300 people a day. So the need was there, and we was prepared to meet those challenges. Bishop, we love you, and we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Fisher Brown has been providing the senior village with meals for four years, once a week. Members from Fisher Community Church comes out to help serve and receive a midweek Bible study. The meals are free and provided for any person attending the Bible study. As it says in the Bible, in Matthew 25, verse 35, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. By feeding the hungry, Bishop Brown demonstrates how God would like all of his disciples to lead. The residents who live in the community are very grateful for Bishop Brown and the Fisher Community Church family. Fisher Community Church has been open for five years, and its membership is steady growing. Bishop Brown continues to help young black males stay out of prison. He's also very active in the New Orleans public school system. He cares about the community and helping people, and it shows by his actions. Bishop James Nelson Brown proves that if you follow God's purpose for your life, you'll always be blessed.